it's Anthony Hannigan. Welcome back to musicmoose.org. We are just wrapping up things on um, the actual beginnings. So um, one of the things, to refresh your minds, we went over the G, just simple little Monroe style. To the D. And we also did that in the C position, and in the D position, and in the A position. And then we did with the long C chord. Now we're going to do it more of like a swingier kind of version, more bluegrassy, in that same C chord. So if I'm going to play it like... So pretty much what I want to do is take the same notes... So we're going to walk that down to your long C. And you want to get in the practice of using this third, third fret, fifth fret, and then all the way down here to the eighth fret. You can do the same thing right above it. You might have to stretch using this finger too, so you try it both ways, and whatever's comfortable for you, that's the one you want to stick with and use. There's that slide again, just like we did with the other kickoffs. It's up from the 6 to the 7, or you can just keep your fingers planted there. So again, we're going to walk that down from the C. A lot of times I'll change it up the way that I resolve back on the C note. So that's up to you. You have these whole notes to explore. You can explore any possibilities of those. And sometimes what I'll do is like... Just kind of leave some out add a few more, it'll kind of depend on the actual bounciness or the speed or the tempo of the song. So, but the basic kind of feel is that da ba da ba da And you can take that and move back to B. Or if you want to go up with it, you can do the same thing in D. That's a good thing to practice too on those long chords. You can take this long C. Now all it is is seven, five, three. Back up to the five, three again. And that kind of gets you in that whole bouncy kind of phrasing too. And it's gonna train your fingers to start working more independently than rather than when you're first starting, when you start pushing this finger down, this guy wants to follow, and they kind of want to all follow the leader. And each, every day that you pick up the mail and you want to assign each finger a different task, so they start working more independently rather than um, working kind of all piggybacked on one another. So, again, let's try that kick off one more time. We're going to do it in C. Up in D. So you can see each time when you have these long chords right above it, leaves your kickoff or your launching pad. Same with E down here. Go up a half step into F. So there it is. Um, these can be used even during like picking in between a solo or something. So if you're playing just like. Especially, your phrasing is going to be everything, and we're going to worry some more about the right hand, and we're going to get into that in future episodes here at Mandolin, or musicmoose.org. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Anthony Hannigan. Click that mouse now.